Hey YouTube, Zach here, the professional nerd. In today's video, we're going to be reviewing the JG Aurora 85 3D printer. Okay, so within my review, I'm going to talk about the features of this printer, uh, which will also somewhat double as the uh, pros of this printer. Um, I will talk about some of the upgrades I've done to this printer since I've gotten it. Uh, things that I needed to replace, some of the bad things about this printer, and then I'll show off uh, two different t uh, test prints that I've done on this printer and talk about the print quality. So it does have a filament runout sensor, a uh, black diamond build plate, which is uh, very similar to the Anycubic uh, Ultra Base. Um, it has a power loss failure protection, uh, which means if it gets powered off, uh, this LCD screen will remember where it was and it will then when you power it right back up, it will allow you to then go back and resume the print. Uh, something with that is this build plate sticks quite well when it's hot, but as soon as it gets cold, it will release the print completely and uh, if you, there's no uh, guarantee that once you heat the printer back up, that this print will actually stick again when you lose power for a long period of time. And going back to this build surface, uh, it sticks quite well when it's warm and hot. And when the prints are done, you can literally almost just pick them up. There is a slight resistance, but it's very minimal. It's much less compared to like glue or PEI when you actually have to like sometimes actually like grab out a scraper and it's like scrape. I've never actually had to use a scraper ever since I leveled this with my BL Touch. Uh, another thing I was just talking about is that in this nice LCD, or LCD touch screen with everything here, which then allows you to actually print with a USB flash drive, which is much better than an SD card. Because you can just plug this into your computer, throw your files on, unplug it, and just plug this flash drive back in. You don't have to go searching around for your SD card reader or such. Um, another feature about this printer is it is Bowden style and it does have a fairly long Bowden uh, tube which spans from here all the way to about right here in the back. And this uh, hot end actually is fairly uh, self contained, or I'm sorry, the extruder is fairly self contained and it actually has very little wiggle room so I was actually able to print with flexible somewhat. Um, once I, I would have to play around the settings a little bit more to get a uh, nice quality flexible prints, but it didn't seem to buckle too much in the uh, extruder. Um, another feature that I extremely love about this printer is the huge and massive build space. Uh, when I was originally reached out by uh, JJ Aurora to get, obtain this printer, I uh, didn't actually pay attention to the build space. I, I did, but I didn't realize how big it actually was. So it's 305 millimeters by 305 millimeters by 320 millimeters in the Z. So that's uh, roughly, I think, 12 inches, 12 inches by 12 and a half inches. So it is a massive build space. It is, honestly, I think the largest build space I have in the X and Y, but definitely not the Z because of my uh, HE3D K280 has a build space of a, is like 600 millimeters tall, but it's delta, so it's circular and it goes up in a cone. But this is honestly probably one of the largest printers I have at the moment. Um, a nice feature about this is it actually has dual leads, uh, dual lead screws. So yes, I did say lead screws, and it, and it has the dual Z motor. So each one is into, or is powered uh, together. This thing came about I'd say 95% built. Uh, it came in two pieces. It came in uh, with this uh, actual assembly, which is where all the electronics are housed, and the power supply, which is contained in the back. And then it came with this uh, square part here. So you would place this in, tip it on its side, uh, hold this in, screw in four screws on the bottom, and then screw in the uh, filament sense or the filament uh, spool holder, and then you're ready to start printing. Uh, another nice thing is you can see that it, everything came nicely wire managed. And I'll go ahead and send a, show a picture of this back side, which is where everything plugs in. But yeah, as you can see right here also, everything is nicely wire managed and this, they really took that into consideration to make sure nothing got like pinched or could get broken. 
And also, since this is completely made out of uh, sheet metal, so it is fairly rigid. Uh, I'm a little bit concerned with how much play there is in the back and forth this way, but I don't think that would come into play with the speeds that I'm printing at, and this assembly doesn't actually move back and forth, it's only this spot here that moves, so I think it should be fine with that rigidity. Now we're going to talk about the upgrades uh, I have done to this printer. So I installed a BL Touch onto this uh, 3D printer. Uh, I'll show a picture of that. Installed in the back. So that allows me to actually use unified bed leveling and some of the nice features within Marlin to get this build space completely level and to get print sticking perfectly every single time. So this has leveling built in, which you click on the LCD screen and it takes you to a certain point. So as you can see, I chose it to go to the fifth place, which is straight in the middle. So it will just go to those points, which then you would then take your piece of paper, go in and out from the nozzle, get the test, and you just keep twisting this. So I added the BL Touch so I didn't have to worry about that because I really didn't trust how level this piece of aluminum and glass was, but it did work. It, my BL Touch works well and I'm not going to complain about that. So the next upgrade you can do, you can see I did was this, you see this green uh, fan shroud down here, which is allowing uh, more cooling straight to the nozzle instead of the actual heater block, which is how the original uh, one came on the printer. Um, along with that new fan shroud, I'm also running the community uh, created firmware, which uh, has all the safety features enabled. Uh, it's the newest version of Marlin and has some other nice features that allow it to print a little bit better so it has I think a better acceleration uh, and other features within the firmware that allow you to get a better print quality. So the back cooling fan for the actual heat break uh, completely seized up so I actually had to go out and buy a new 24 volt fan because I don't have 24 volt fans laying around because this is my second 24 volt system. So I had to go buy a new fan, replace that, and it's now working all nice now. Um, the other thing I had to replace, and the next two I actually got replaced by JG Aurora. I contacted them through their Skype, and I was able to get the parts sent out to me and replaced. So this back lead screw over on this side uh, came bent, so they sent out a new one, got that replaced. Uh, the next thing that I had to get replaced was the actual power cable, which is somewhat weird to talk about, but uh, here is uh, an example of the power cord. Now this is one that I am using on my CNC actually. So what happened was on the installation, uh, it seemed to be like melted, uh, melted away or something. There was actual wires that were being exposed, but it was just the earth ground, but I still did not trust that power cable. So I threw that out, used the one for a temporary one from another 3D printer. And then JJ Aurora went ahead and sent me a new one, and I got everything working, and everything's working nice now. So here's some of the uh, bad parts of this printer. Uh, so currently, I this has uh, A4988 separate motor drivers installed, so the actual Y-axis is actually quite loud. The X-axis is not that bad when moving, but the X-axis is quite loud. And my theory as to why is because everything is self-contained within this metal unit, uh, or on enclosure, that it's actually kind of amplifying the sounds from the movement. And also the uh, stepper motor is attached straight to this metal housing on the back. So I think it's resonating through the metal, but I could be completely wrong, but I am going to try installing some TMC 2100 stepper motor drivers that I have laying around and seeing if I can get the uh, sound to be much quieter. Uh, one more thing with the printer, and I do not think it's a hardware issue because uh, I've, this thing is rock solid in the x-axis the y-axis so uh, some of the prints are actually kind of uh, kind of rough on the outside so I think I need to mess around with my Kira settings a little bit better and a little bit more just to get it down to a better print quality but as of right now the print quality is mediocre I'd say so now I'm going to talk about some of these test prints so as you can see I did the mini 3d printer tests and I'll show some nice photos of this, but 
as you can see, the overhangs actually are quite nice up into about 60 degrees is where I started seeing some issues within the uh, overhang test. Uh, stringing test in my settings, I have gotten the stringing down to absolutely bare minimal and there is no under extrusion when it restarts the uh, other side, which is super nice. The mesh accuracy was quite well. Uh, I think the X was off. It was like, uh, this would be 10, so I think it was like 10.5. Oh, 05 and the Y was like 10.1 and the Z was like 10.07 uh, when measured so pretty much right in bounds uh, quite close uh, so you could do a little bit more tweaking but for what I'm using it for uh, that is quite well uh, bridging was quite well uh, the only bad part about this print is like the smaller uh, Label, no, uh, labeling on here, so it says, it says like br bridging test, support test, uh, uh, scale tests, and etc. Uh, the small items did not really show up that well, but I think that's because this is using a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, and there's other factors that could be contributing to that. But everything else looks good and dimensionally is fairly accurate. And the last print that I'm going to show off uh, is the first part first couple parts that I've printed to see how they came out uh, for the mostly printed CNC. I have everything bought for that and everything I need to do now is just do a couple weeks worth of just straight 3D printing on the JG Aurora printing all the parts. So as you can see the out, outer surface is actually quite uh, rough but uh, it does seem fairly you know it doesn't seem like it's delaminated or anything so it printed quite well I'd say just the yeah, out, outer appearance is not the best but it works what it's going to be used for. Uh, so overall, I'd give this printer about 4 out of 5 stars. Uh, print quality, I highly believe is due to Kira settings. So I'm going to do some more research online, uh, mess around with settings again. And once I get those settings completely dialed in, I'm getting beautiful prints. I will post my uh, Kira settings on, uh, in the YouTube description. I'm also going to post the BL Touch uh, link to the BL Touch down below, the fan shroud down below, BL Touch mount down below, and also down below in the YouTube description, I have now promo code for 10% off with Ziltech.com. Uh, this is uh, the filament that I have been trying to run to print all of my mostly printed CNC on. I have two rolls of their PLA, it's green. So you can use the 10% discount code down below, it's the professional nerd. Uh, all the details will be down below in the YouTube description. So yeah, uh, please like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.